Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how I made these leaf trays and coaster from beginning to end. So if you want to see the complete process, keep on watching. So for these leaf trays, I am using three different shades of green. I have a dark green tint a light green it's just an acrylic paint that i mixed in and then a bright green mica and then in the center there i poured gold leaf mixed in with the clear and here i'm pouring the dark tint and i find it's easier to pour more accurately when your cup isn't full so I was taking that larger cup and just pouring it into a smaller cup so that I could pour a little more accurately and not uh, make a big mess. <laughs> um, and I wanted the dark green to touch the clear that I poured in originally with the leaf. So I just added a bit more there. Now I'm pouring in the light green um, acrylic paint. And now just some clear in the center to spread those out and get them kind of moving around a little bit. Now you can see I'm just drizzling the green mica and I don't want a ton of it. I don't want it to um, take over the piece. So I'm just drizzling it in with my popsicle stick. adding a bit more to that small coaster and then drizzling in the mica Um, I let these sit for six hours and then I came back in here to unmold and shape them and I started recording and my battery was dead so I apologize. So I didn't really get to show you how I did this but at least I think you can still get an idea um, when I move all this paper out of the way. So this is the bigger tray over here. The smaller one is underneath this little um, uh, tub of paint because um, it needed to weigh it down. So let me lift these up and then I'll show you kind of how I shaped them. So this is the larger tray and I just wanted like this nice kind of wavy edge on it which is exactly what I got so this turned out really nice and you can kind of see the pattern too from the pouring that I did. So that darker money color, and then I put in that lighter paint, and then you can see the brighter bits of green. This is from the mica, and then of course the gold in the center, and the center is translucent. It's not completely transparent because the mica did kind of spread across there. I don't know how close I can get. I don't, I don't think this camera can focus very close. Um, oh, there we go. So you can see that mica. So it did spread across the center. It's not as strong, but I didn't put a ton of the mica in. Um, 
when I poured it, I just did just a little bit in the center. It was a real thin stream, so that's why there's not a lot of it, but I really like how it looked. It turned out really nice. This is the back, which was, this was the top side that we poured on. Um, this was the mold side. All right, so I just lifted it off of here, so let me move this paper. And this is <laughs> the tray. I had it, I had it sitting like this. Um, so I just used some rounded objects. You can use balls. Um, you know, I, I just used little uh, paint containers because they're round. That's what I wanted, you know, to get these rounded edges. I wanted round objects and I didn't have any balls, <laughs> so I just used these. And this is just a platter that I have in my kitchen. And then I taped the paint to the platter because um, it moves around a lot. It's really hard. When you lay your piece on top of whatever it is you're going to shape it with, you have to be able to press it down. When you press it down, the balls or you know anything you have underneath it is going to want to move out. So that's why I taped everything down. So it took a little bit of doing. And I put the wax paper down to prevent these from making any marks. Um, I probably should have used plastic. Um, I have an old shower curtain somewhere that I cut just for this type of thing and I can't find it. So I put the, the wax paper down. Now um, the resin doesn't stick to it but it does kind of dull it and you can see like right in here that's where it was pressing hard against the wax paper so a little bit of the shine is gone from a couple spots on the back now you can see them really good right here so it's not a big deal because it is the bottom of this piece it's not going to show but if you are trying to shape something and you don't want that to happen use plastic you could use plastic wrap um, or any kind of shiny um, plastic is fine for that all right, so I get this out of the way. Okay, and then the other one, the smaller one, is under here. So I used this to just kind of weight it down because it really wanted to stay flat. I think it eventually would have sagged in the middle. And I just laid the paper over it so that wouldn't leave any marks. And then here is the smaller tray. So just very similar, um, just a, a nice gentle curve on the sides. And this one looks very close in terms of how the mica dropped through, the um, lighter paint showing through the tint, the semi-transparent center. So it's a nice set. And this one I only used two bottles of paint. And then I just kind of tucked these under to kind of lift up the ends a little bit. All right, get those out of the way. Okay, so now my next step with these is um, I want to paint in the lines. So if you look, you can see very faintly you can kind of see where the light is hitting. There's some leaf like veining. You'll you'll be able to see it more once I start painting. There you go. You can see it where that light is hitting. So there is some veining in this mold. Um, so I'm going to paint those with gold. Um, so for this process, I'm going to get a paper towel. And I'm just going to spritz it. Just one spritz with some... You can use rubbing alcohol or Windex. Even water would probably work because um, I'm using acrylic paint. So this is just a folk art metallic in the color royal gold. And I picked it because it matches the gold leaf in here really well. Just gonna shake it.
All right, now the next step is sanding these edges. So I'm actually going to first go over them with a um, deburring tool because there was a bit of overflow. So there's just some little overflow spots in here. So I'm going to remove those with the deburring tool on the bottom. And then I'm going to go around the top side here and get rid of um, these little rough edges with my files. And here's the deburring tool. So I just got this on Amazon. It comes with um, this one came with 10 blades and it's super easy to use this on resin. So just kind of feel around till you find those spots that you want to remove. Pretty much this whole side. So all you do, now you can do it either with the top up or the top down. You can do it either way. I actually usually do it both directions because then I don't miss anything. Um, with the deburring tool because the blade spins around, you can see that spinning. Um, it's hard to do curved sides that are curving towards you this way. If they're curving this way, well I guess they're both towards me, but if they're curving towards the blade it's hard to keep the blade on the resin piece. If it's curving away from the blade, it's real easy because you're pushing into it. So this is a very kind of a random edge that's going to be curving towards the blade and away from the blade. So in order to make sure I get a good removal of the lip, I'm going to do it this direction and then flip it over and then do it again. So then that way, you know, if it's upside down, the pieces that are curving away from me that are hard to get when it's right side up, I'll be able to get them the other way. So there we go. So I just tip it on its side. And again, I'm doing the bottom edge, not the top edge. I try to never do the top edge with the deburring tool because it scratches. So if, you, if you're going to do a flood coat, um, it's fine. You don't need to worry about scratches. Um, but I'm not doing a flood coat on this, so I do not want to scratch the top. <laughs> so, um, I, that's why I'm going to sand these rough edges instead of using the deburring tool, because um, I would definitely scratch it. Alright, so, I just slide the tool along the edge. It's super simple. Um, some people like to just use a razor blade for this. The deburring tool is actually made for it. And I think it's a little bit safer. <laughs> Not as likely to cut yourself. But I'm sure you still could. <laughs> the blade doesn't seem as sharp as like a, an X-Acto knife or something like that. But you can see how it's jumping. When I get over this curve and then the curve changes, it jumps. And that's because it's easier to do one way and not the other. nail files. I find I have the best control with these. Um, they definitely don't last as long as sandpaper, like a heavy duty sandpaper. So these two files will probably get me through 
these three pieces. I've got the um, smaller coaster over there. Um, so yeah, they definitely don't last as long, but it's a lot easier for me anyways. So um, the files, I have four different grits. So this file is an 80 grit on one side and a 100 grit on the other. And this one is 180 and 240. So 240, um, if you're just doing edges like this, it will leave a matte finish, but it won't have scratches in it. And it's such a teeny tiny edge that I don't usually worry too much about it being matte when the rest of the piece is shiny. On like a coaster or something, you really can't even tell um, because it's just the very barest edge. So um, I'm just going to do this on the front of the coaster, like I said, to get rid of these spots where there's bubbles. So I'm going to start with the um, 80 grit side, which is the roughest. I'm just going to feel, and I'm just going to just right along where those bubbles are. trying to get rid of the entire bubble because I'm going to come through with a gold leaf pen and do the edges. And where the bubbles are, you're going to have holes in that gold leaf. So that's what I'm trying to get rid of. So the big bubbles, again, I'm doing with the 80 grit. And make sure you hold it at an angle. I probably have it about a 45 degree angle. So I can turn it and show you about like that so it's not flat if you hold it flat you risk scratching your piece so I'm just running my finger down the side <clears throat> I'm not relying on my eyes I'm relying on my finger to feel those rough spots because you can feel them a lot better than you can see them. Now you could do this with the paint, the same paint that, that um, you used for the veining. And um, doing it with a paintbrush is a lot more difficult and paint doesn't dry super quick. Um, so I like to use these gold leafing pens. 
Um, these are Krylon. I don't know if you can see that. It's too shiny. Um, it's a Krylon. This is the 18 karat gold leafing pen. They've got a silver and a rose gold as well. So I'm going to use the 18 karat because it matches this gold pretty nicely. So all I'm going to do is just run it right along these edges. And there we have the finished coaster and trinket trays. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please feel free to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.